Hi guys, we are here with Taylor Preston from Labor, and we're going to talk how Labor is in Grand Rapids, which is badass, a local company that we're talking, that we're interviewing. Shit, we should have had to come in the studio yet. <laughs> We're like that well, would be maybe, the first like no no we had one other guy i think and i maybe at a later point we can have them in so yeah there you go you know as a as a, as a, te- as a local tech startup it's always cool to kind of see these things definitely out of out of west michigan so many cool things happening right now in west michigan so thank you so much for being on the show taylor yeah of course thanks for having me looking forward to uh to getting into the conversation Awesome. So obviously, just let's jump right into it. Why don't you tell us, spend a few minutes just talking a little bit about what labor is and, and what does it mean for, you know, your workers, who is your customers and who is your workers and that kind of stuff? Yeah, that sounds great. Would uh, Do you guys want the, uh, the, the spiel on who our clients are or you want the whole two minute on how well, we got here? Yeah, well, oh. w- w- what we typically do is say, give me a 60 second elevator speech. Someone walks into the elevator and it's like, hey, man, what's up? What do you do? Oh, yeah. All <laughs> right. I can, I can I can nail that one. I've got that one down now. So I could probably I, I bet I could do it in 15 seconds. So essentially oh, we're a gig economy provider of general labor to businesses. So on one hand of the platform, on one side of the platform, we've got our client clients, which are local businesses and whatever markets we're active in. And on the other side, we our other client quote unquote is uh are the workers that we're, we're keeping happy and letting them pick the jobs that they want to work um with the businesses that are our clients on the other side of the equation okay very, very cool very very cool so how does it work then so i come in i i let's say i you know we always talk a lot about you said you heard the show earlier but we talk a lot about buckets we talk about obviously our audience having a lot of different buckets so how does it work if i want to add one or two buckets using the labor show to what i can do what would how would i go about doing that yeah absolutely so there's a, a quick onboarding process uh, similar to the other gig economy providers so download the app uh labr in the app store and um and then it'll take you through a quick onboarding it, it'll take less than five minutes to do if you knock it all out at once okay. um and then once you're once you're through that and your account is approved then you're active and you can go and select jobs so we have jobs all over the place all the way from you know eight hour shifts in construction to two hour shifts, packing boxes in a distribution center that needs to go out and everywhere in between uh, okay. and all different types of jobs. So it's as simple as really going through the effort to uh, go through the onboarding process. And then you can pick whatever jobs fit your schedule or your interest or whatever, uh, whatever, whatever jobs you're looking to fill and, and make a little extra money. Cool. So the jobs uh, primarily at businesses or do you also have the jobs actually being out of homes? Like yes, whether- I'd say 90, uh, 98 are businesses. Actually, when we started this this down this journey a long time ago, we thought it was going to be primarily residential, which is going to be a huge market. But uh, we found that the businesses, just in the timing that we launched with the labor shortage, it's <laughs> a lot easier to sell one business on your service that they'll use it every single day than a homeowner that'll use it twice a year. So we've just kind of gravitated where the opportunity lies. Uh, you know, selfishly, I use it probably at least every other week on my own to <laughs> keep my yard in order and keep my chores and and all that stuff so i think that that will be a large uh piece of our business in the future but right now the opportunity is on the business side okay so talk a little bit about the approval process that was main reason why i talked about you know where is the work done because i I would assume that if you're asking people to work in other people's homes that the approval process might be a little bit more rigorous than if you're kind of quote unquote just working in in a factory you know i I would almost assume that the risk might be a little bit higher so but talk about you know what do you guys do do you guys do background checks what do you guys do uh, when it comes to getting approved yeah, absolutely. A great question. And, and you're spot on about the homeowner. Um, it's just a lot more uh, red tape, as I'd say. Not not that it's bad. It's just a lot more uh, yeah. steps. So on the business side, and, and when we onboard a, a worker into our pool is um, they go through, download the app. Once they get the app, they get a, a welcome call, setting the expectations. A lot of uh, a lot of people don't want to talk to anybody on the phone anymore. So that results in a, a voicemail. Uh, follow up email, and then we provide everybody the second that you sign up, you get a link to answer two very basic interview questions. It's like, tell me about yourself, and then, um, you know, how do you take pride in your work? A very generic one. Both have 30 second answers. Uh, if and when you go through that, we review it, which, um, you know, we're, we're just looking for the outliers and people that uh, are just trying to get through that really aren't anticipating working or, or don't really okay. take a lot of pride in their work. Um, and obviously being a startup that, that gets tweaked and, and improved, uh, 
sure. almost every week, it feels like. Uh, once they're through that, then we run them through a background check to make sure it's all good to go. And we've got a great partner um, on the background check side. So it's instantaneous and the text prompts lead you through it. So we don't have to deal with our workers' um, private information, confidential information. Yep. Uh, and then that comes back almost instantaneously. And once all that's through, um, then we activate the account and they can go in and accept jobs here. They could, if, you know, if you have family over in Detroit, you could accept a job in Detroit because you know you'll be over there in two weeks. And um, so really from there on, it's, uh, it's up to all the workers to select the jobs they want. Okay, cool. So what's the process about what can I, what, what kind of jobs I can approve? What, what kind of jobs I can do? I mean, I know obviously a lot of the is general labor, right? But, but, you know, is there any, is there any like limitations as to as a brand new sign up with the kind of jobs that I can accept or, or you know, kind of, what, how does that work? Yeah, great question. I think that that's going to be a twofold answer. Right now, it's all general labor, and how I define general labor, it's a little bit different than what's out there today. You know, it's a it's a whole different uh, mindset for businesses that use us, and they've been receiving us with open arms. But um, in our in our definition of general labor is, can you teach it in ten minutes or less? So okay. can we send somebody a very capable person in there that's smart, that's that's motivated, that'll do a good job, and can you teach them how to do it? Um, and if if you can't teach it in like you can't teach somebody how to use a chainsaw in 10 minutes. So you probably shouldn't be putting a chainsaw in there. No. Uh, I like that. I like that I mean, principle. You, you can, but they're not going to be safe with it. Right, exactly. It's bad for everybody involved. With that. <laughs> so, and that's another reason that we stay away from homeowners because they think that everybody should know how to use everything. But right. Sorry, I'll digress on that topic. But uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's it's really uh, these businesses, they get it too. They know they've got a much better feel for um what people are able to do, what they should reasonably expect. Uh, and then we've got a lot of stipulations around. We don't let people on ladders. We don't let them on scissor lifts. We don't let them use anything with a blade, no power tools, um, all those types of things. Now, the reason that I said it's kind of twofold in the future, I can't wait till we get to the part where we have a true robust training program where we can really help our workers make more money. Hey, you get this badge level. Now you make more money. Ooh, okay. Um, so we're not there yet, but I'm, I'm thrilled when we're able to start rolling that stuff out, whether it's safety, whether it's higher skilled work, whether it's different verticals in general. Um, it's just that we've, uh, we'll never go as fast as I'm hoping we're five months into this and, uh, I've, oh, we're, wow. we're pretty, uh, we're pretty pleased with where we're at. And, uh, there's, there's a ton of room to become the, to, to yeah. become even better. So we're looking so, forward to it. So, so there's, do you, do, go ahead, Jason. Let me ask a question. I'm going to slap the shit out of you. <laughs> I told him, I said, you can take the lead because I don't know as much about it. And he, he he won't even let me get a damn question in. Uh, hey, in his defense, I, they're all great questions. So I'm just they excited. Are. <laughs> so there are a couple apps. We interviewed a guy. Uh, uh, says It's called I Need a Hand. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, it sounds like a similar process, but the difference, uh, and maybe this is the same for you, but there was a, he just connected the people. There was the money exchange was between the the client and the, and the homeowner, let's say. So I need a hand didn't do any money exchange that was on them. Is that the same with y'all or are you collecting the money and paying the worker? No, that's a great question. We're collecting and paying. And, and again, back to what we thought it was going to be years ago. Uh, we thought it was going to be a pure marketplace, but especially on the business side, there's a lot more um, kind of handholding with in terms of, hey, I need my billing this way. I need these payment yeah. terms. And it's not really fair either. Like the, the way that we came up with the whole idea is I wanted this job when I was going through school and needed extra money. And my, my business partner needed this at his business. Um, and so it's really important to us that we stick to what we set out to do, take care of the workers and take care of the clients and having, you know, a client versus client basically because we got two clients disputed it just seems a little bit uh a little bit clunky to me so we just took everything out and we do the collecting and we do the paying okay so that brings up a is it okay to ask it yes you can <laughs> <laughs> love you buddy so, so since you since you um you're handling all that stuff another big issue that we always talk about when it comes to gig work is insurance so how does that work for you guys do you guys have to then carry the workman's comp and all that stuff, or how is all those things handled? Yeah, so we, um, again, I don't want to push any liability off onto the workers. They're the backbones that are, are making this this whole business for all of us. Um, so we've got a general liability policy that's in line with our strictest clients. So if they say, hey, we need a $2 million umbrella, that's, that's what we carry. Okay. 
Um, and then for the workers that are out in the field, they're all 1099 contractors of ours. So we have an occupational accident policy, a, a pretty robust one that protects the workers in the event that they were to get um, hurt on the job. So, no, so no. while they are on the job, at the client side, you protect them should anything happen. You got it. Okay, that's awesome. That that's that's, that's really awesome right there. Um, what about payments? How quickly do you guys pay out and and, and those kind of things? Yes, yeah, so we pay out in seventy two hours right now. Um, realistically, I I would guess, and it, it's funny, the bigger the company gets, the farther I am away from having my finger on the pulse, but I think that it's in about 48 hours right now. Obviously, that's a big KPI for us to continue to, to shrink as people want money quicker, but we're right in the 48 to 72 hour window right now. Okay. So how do you make money? Are you charging the customer? Okay. So are you char we'll just do business Let's because uh, that's what you're doing. Are you charging the business the fee? Is, is the pay getting docked from the you know the worker or how does that work yeah great question so we've got um we've got set rates set hourly rates with clients set hourly rates with workers and then we take the spread so um we've got a whole team that's dedicated we call it the service team so if you know a worker gets to a job and they can't find you jason at the job site they'll call us and say hey i'm looking for jason all over the place and they they're kind of i don't know air air traffic controllers making sure the job yeah. is moved. um and so we've got a pretty big support system in there that makes sure that everything's going smooth. And then on the worker side of things, we've got a sliding scale based on how many jobs and the rating is really how many jobs without issue have you had? Because when we send 10 people to the job site, nobody wants to rate 10 workers. Mm -hmm. So we've got a scale. The more jobs you do without any schedule issues, the more jobs you do without any complaints, the higher your rate goes. Oh. And then just flat hourly rate. So like the job posting will say, hey, this is a six hour job, estimated six hour job across town. And you already know your hourly rate. So you can estimate what your total shift income is. So so no matter what, no matter what the job you accept, your rate is your rate. Yep. And your rating <clears throat> and, and how good you are affects your rate. Yep, exactly. I love that. I yeah. Love that. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of a little bit of the W2 world thrown right. into the 1099 because, you know, you, you're an Uber driver. It doesn't matter. You know, people put snacks in their car and they right. wash their car every day. No, Uber doesn't care. You know what I mean? You're not getting rewarded because you have a cleaner. Now, there are some some point system and rewards, but they're not monetary rewards. They're usually like you know, whatever, I don't know, you can go to college or something, which I guess is monetary. But anyways, <laughs> my point is, is it, it's, it doesn't have like a, a great reward system where like you're literally getting a raise because you show up on time, you do the job right, you don't miss a shift and those kind of things. So I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we want it to be predictable too. The, the constant pain points that we hear from our, our uh, fellow gig partners slash competitors is the unpredictability of, hey, when I accept a, a ride, a, 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 a delivery, what does that mean in yeah. terms of time? And then how much money am I going to make? So that was, I wish we could take credit for it, but that was just an, un we, you know, it's amount of hours times your hourly rate. And um, so that's yeah. that trip out. Can you imagine, Jason, if your rating, if your, if your driver rating would affect your rate? In Uber, yeah. Well, I mean, wow. I I would think it would. I would work harder. I oh, mean, absolutely. I have a good work ethic, you know, for my W two job, and and I do for gig work too. But if I knew that I could get paid more per mile right. if I had a better rating, oh shit, like that would be a game changer. So that scale is that scale public to people, so they know that once they reach this point, they're gonna get this, and once they reach that point, they're gonna get yeah. that. Or is it depend? Is it uh, okay? So that's they, that's just a model that they and, can follow. And the scale might be is different depending on the job, right? No, not yet. No, nope. it's all just one bucket right now. And okay. I would think another six to twelve months before we get there. And I don't, I don't even mind saying it. We're at fifteen to twenty bucks an hour, and um, we have bonuses along the way. So the more jobs you do, the the better. And then, um, you know, one uh, again, we didn't, we couldn't have drawn up a better uh, opportunity for ourselves. But with all the gas prices going on right now, oh, I know um, we've unintentionally been we we've never really looked to steal gig workers and i know there's plenty of room in the space for everybody but we've had a lot of uh a lot of drivers coming to us recently because we just paid the flat rate there's no wear and tear on a vehicle no gas no nothing yeah it's funny you bring that up because i even had said maybe i didn't say it to yes but i may have said it to somebody else i don't know but um 
I got a friend that delivers little Debbie through West Michigan. And I was like, bro, what this winter, like I could use a couple of days because the gas, I mean, like the wear and tear, whatever my, my truck's got 250,000, like it's <laughs> just a tank, man. I don't care, but five, it gets 17 miles to the gallon. So like $5, you know, I'm like, I need a little bit of supplement that <laughs> is guaranteed money. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. not, paying five you know all that gas money so that that's pretty sweet i love well, it 250,000 miles congrats on buying a ford <laughs> oh no 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 sir <laughs> that would be a honda a honda <laughs> a ford wouldn't make it my mother-in-law has a ford and that thing's falling apart so much it's like a hundred and six thousand miles now it doesn't mean i haven't put money into my pilot but there's no error lights on my pilot it looks just like it, it is because he covered it with black tape. No, they're all red. They're all red. They're not orange. They're, and they're blinking. No, they're not. So, uh, from the from the client perspective of the companies, what what sets you up? Why, why? How are you different than a temp service? Yeah, great question. I actually heard the best um, the best description. We got referred to a different client recently, and and they in the email the guy said, "Hey, the best comparison I can say is." Imagine Uber and traditional staffing have a baby. And so the reason that uh, the reason that I, I mentioned that is is the you know my my whole outlook on the economy right now, everybody's talking about how there's not workers and there aren't workers that want to work the jobs that businesses want them to work, but there's plenty of great talent out there that's willing to work oh, yeah. hard. We just now have to get around the corner of catering to to what their needs are they want to be paid quickly they want flexible schedules they want to work with in our case a lot of people actually like working with their friends um so us being able to deliver that to the workers we if we get somebody to a job site for a client they they rarely ever leave us because they're so impressed with the caliber of people that we're sending there and I, the whole okay. thesis is there's plenty of people that are great workers but they're not just going to work for minimum wage in horrible conditions Right. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I see uh, there's a website or a Facebook page called Gig It Done, like Gig It Done Cat County or depending on what county you live in. And it's I don't know who started it, but it's, you know, you can post I need this done. And and people are asking desperate for workers, but some people are posting like, yeah, we start at twelve dollars an hour. I'm like, bro, you're not going to get anybody for twelve dollars an hour, especially a W-2 job where, you know, you got tax oh, yeah. like it's not going to happen. So. Yeah, the workers are out there, but they've just decided, you know what? I don't want to work a traditional job. Right. I want flexibility. And these companies better jump on board. Otherwise, it's going to be rough. Yep. When they want different things, they they don't want to do the same thing every day. Right. Yeah. right? They don't want to do the same thing. So one thing that just came to mind, and I, and I don't know if you're giving this any thought at all, but do you think that do you think that once fruit picking season starts picking up, do you think that's going to affect your business? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna jot that down right now because that's such a good thing to consider. And I think I think there are actually a lot of um, industries like that that do impact it. And specifically, you get the seasonal migration up from yeah. Mexico, and you get all the visas and all that stuff. So that has definitely been, um, you know, in our first year, a learning experience for us. But I wouldn't say it's make or break. I mean, you think about the space of you think okay, so you got Uber and Shipped and all those companies that are just drivers. And yep. how massive drivers only is. And then you layer on an arena where everybody everybody works pretty much. Over 18, you work. So there's just so many different areas for opportunities. When I think of the, the fruit pickers, when I think of a lot of landscaping down south, mm -hmm. uh, construction, all the, the visa programs, um, they've been doing it that way, a lot of them, for 10, 20, 30 years. And that's great. We're not trying to rock the boat there. Uh, there's such a massive playing field for us to play on that I'm not too concerned about losing, losing, uh, losing quote unquote workers out there, losing client demand, because a lot of the businesses that are choosing to use us, I'd say I, this is a guess, but I'd say about 50 percent use regularly temp staffing services. Another 50 sure. percent would never consider a temp staffing service, whether it's a stigma, whether it's a misunderstanding or they just didn't have a good experience with it. And they're coming over to use our services because of that. So part of it is playing in the the trying to get people to change the way they're working on. But that isn't our, our model. Our model is, hey, we think we have a better mousetrap and we'd love for you to work on it or to use it with us. That's that, does that answer your question? Absolutely. No, it's, yeah, absolutely. And I was just, I guess part of it was exactly that. It was like, how, how do you, how do you 
anticipate seasonal seasonal work to to kind of affect your model well i mean i'm a seasonal worker i do lawn i do lawn fertilization i work from mid-march you, to you mow come on i do not that's a joke for years they say i mow i'm like i'm not a mow jockey <laughs> i i am a licensed pesticide <laughs> applicator damn it no i've done that for like 20 years so come like the end of october i'm you know and since gig work came around i've been doing full-time gig work that's all right. i do so yeah. This actually makes me excited, especially with the gas prices. I mean, yeah, is 15 great? No. Is 20 good? Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of time during the week. Uh, I'm only making about 20 an hour. You know what I mean? And, and at that point, you still haven't paid for gas and that kind of stuff. Well, I have, but it doesn't include the wear and tear. But yep. I also love flexibility. I mean, it's it's oh, it's worth its weight in gold because being able to be like, take my kids to a doctor's appointment. My wife knows that I'm available 24 mm -hmm. hours a day at any mo moment I can drop whatever I'm doing, drop my last order off. So that's why I struggle a little bit committing to, even if it's more money to a job where right. I'm committed for five hours or six hours or whatever. Yeah. And that, that's been a lot of the feedback that we got and we're, we're coming up with creative ways. You know, one of the interesting pieces, we are a lot more hands-on than the pure marketplace uh, applications out there, but we've had some clients that, that got really smart in the way that they're posting jobs. So we will either post it if some of the clients like to post on their own. Sometimes they like to call. My business partner owns part of the company and he still calls me to say, hey, can you post this job for me? So, hey, whatever, whatever it needs to be. But Sounds like Jesper. No. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> So point being in that is some of these clients that have gotten really crafty and they picked up on it before we did is exactly what you're saying. Nobody wants to work a five, six, seven, eight hour shift. Um, so you get people all the way from we get people asking us for second, third shift, 12 hour shifts wow. all the way down to I would like to work two hours between the windows of eight to five p.m. So we've gotten everything in between. And, and that's kind of a, a piece of our, our uh, client relationship aspect is um, it's having to to work with these businesses who are very open-minded and, and need to adapt to the new ways of working and saying, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. these, we can get your talent in not eight hours of time at the times that you want, but we could get somebody nine to noon and they'll come in and they'll work really hard and do a good job for you. So a lot of it has been kind of, kind of working with businesses to help them understand that there's plenty of uh, horsepower out there. It's how do you deploy right. it? Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't have started a better time. I, I wonder though, if, it's not as wild as it is now. And then, you know, you know what I'm saying? They're like, the companies won't be as flexible. They're like, cause right now they'll take two hours. I mean, they, they'll be like, I need it. If, if two, two hours is going to get me ahead, but a year from now they're like, nah, not, nah. but yeah. I mean, there'll always be the work out there. Just maybe not as much as there is right now. I no, think that's a great... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Taylor. I was going to say that's a perfect, uh, that's a perfect point. And it, I totally agree. And what I've, really instilled in our team is we didn't design it to launch right now. We got lucky and let's take all the luck we can get because yep. starting the business isn't, isn't easy. So right. we've got basically got six months to really get our processes dialed in so that we can manage those ebbs and flows and demand. And once it tightens up on the business side, um, we're, we're able to respond appropriately. No. And I think by also think your, your timing is right. I remember back when I was driving, I, so I haven't driven in two years because of COVID. Right. Um, but, but back before that, that was, I remember when they were just launching like Uber eats and doing some of those other services, nobody wanted to touch them with it, you know, at all. Right. Because yeah. it wasn't worth it. Nobody wanted to do it, deliver any of these foods or nothing like that. But then everything stopped, you know, pandemic started, there was no driving all of a sudden, people had no choice but to switch to food delivery. And right. now, my point is now, a lot of those people, they don't want to go back to having people in their cars. And no, I don't want that. That's no, me. it's easy. <laughs> I can could, I could just get to drop the food off. It's all good. Do my own thing. Right. I don't have to deal with people. Exactly. So I'm wondering if you could see some of the same with you guys. You say you see right now, you see people jumping to your platform, but then people are going to say, well, once they can once gas goes down again, I don't necessarily think people are gonna, you know, flee from your platform. Going, they're gonna, they've learned it, and they say, "We like that. We like that more than we like driving, yeah, or whatever that is, right?" Yeah, so, and I think retention retention is a massive piece of it. And if we're doing our jobs right, we make it so good that people are like, "Yeah, there are some things that aren't that great about it, but they treat me so well, they pay me so well, they pay me so quick. Whatever it is that's important right. to our workers, as long as we're staying up with that." 
then mm-hmm. really it's it's it should be our battle to lose because we don't do it right. Well, right. Taylor, I I appreciate the time. Uh, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited <laughs> about this. Like I didn't know it was this. He's gonna go sign up right now, bro. I will. <laughs> I mean, I I don't do much gig work in the summer. I get plenty of hours. My my W two guy, he pays me well. That's why I've come back for the last I don't know 15 years. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so I don't, I try not to do a lot of gig work in the summer, but this winter I'm, I'm super stoked about that. So I'll definitely play around the app and, you know, create a profile and background and just get the things going. But I think this man, you need to get the word out. Like I think a lot of gig workers would, would jump on this big time. I Yeah. I think I'd see why not. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't. How can... People get a hold of you, and obviously you can download the app in iOS or Android. It's L A B R, right? Yep, L A B R. Yep, L A B R dot com. So there's a form online. You can go to the app store and download it. Uh, and then probably the quickest, as much as I would love to respond to all the emails, I'm the slowest way to get anything done in the company oh. I've come to terms with. Um, so info at labor dot com. You can go to the website, fill out the forms, uh, or just go download the app and. A member of our service team will reach out. All right. And how many states are you guys active in right now? Um, so we are we are in Michigan, Indiana, Oklahoma, and Ohio. Um, well, we'll say we'll say now, but really seven one. So we'll be in those four states, uh, and we expect to be in three more by the end of the year. Okay. okay. And what's the what's the obstacle for entering a new state? Um, there's a lot, obviously, with all the uh, contractor debates going on and, and different opinions on that. That's a big consideration. We've got to get a legal opinion every time. But it's pretty much as simple as registering in the state to do business and then adding our insurance to, to the state that we're operating in. And Okay. And the gas. So cool. so it's fairly it's fairly quickly you're going to be in new states, I guess. That's all yep. I'm trying to get at. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, we, we got to get our we got to get our feet on the ground this year. And that's why we're not going gung ho. But starting next year, every uh, new state, every every month. Awesome. Well, that's, thanks again. Really I, cool. We super appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's awesome that you guys are in Grand Rapids. I love the, the episodes that I listen to beforehand, and I appreciate the invite. This podcast is produced and edited by Hey Guys Media Group. Want to start a podcast? Check out heyguysmediagroup.com.